I think there's different uh, needs on a team. I think you need people who are consistent comp- like mm-hmm. and confident and just, you know, do what they need to do. People like Betty who are coming out banging, people who bring a lot of energy. Uh, me. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> people who are super analytical, like Sid. Mm-hmm. And it's just like a balance of all of that. This is the Leave It Better podcast, powered by the Side Out Foundation. Here's your host, Hall of Fame coach, Janice Kruger. Hello, listeners. This is the Leave It Better podcast. I'm your host, Janice Kruger. Today, I have two special guests on from the Omaha Supernovas. Uh, one, Kendall White, and two, Sydney Hilly. Actually, it should have been two and three. Yep, two and three. <laughs> Was that the number you guys have? Two and three? Uh, yeah, yeah okay, it is. All right. <laughs> <laughs> we got it close, right? Yes. Well, thanks for being here today, guys. I, I'm super excited. Um, I have been watching you all really through your co- college career and now even uh, into the professional that's here in the States, since it's a little easier for me to see uh, and get access to. Uh, but uh, you both played professional volleyball before this league started. How is this one different for you than the previous things that were mostly overseas, except for the um, Athletes Unlimited, of course? Uh, But uh, can you guys talk about that? And we're going to kind of play off each other a little bit. It's challenging to have two people. So please, if you want to throw something in there, feel free to take it. (laughs) Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no worries. We talk all the time. So we've got a good report. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, I played in France for three years after college. And I think the biggest difference between, you know, playing overseas and coming to play here, like, I think that we treat sports in the United States, like a little bit with more professionalism. Um, I think that we just like kind of put it on a pedestal versus like, you know, things can get a little bit messy over there and like the organization aspect of things and just like little things like that. So I think the approach to the setup of like our league and like our sport in the U S is like a little bit more, you know, online. So I really appreciate that. And also speaking English, I'm not going to lie. That's my favorite thing about being in the States and playing. So it's been great. Yeah. Yeah. And I went overseas for a couple months in Turkey and then I played a season in Puerto Rico. Um, going off with Kendall said, yes, getting to speak English here is great. Cause like in, in <laughs> Turkey, they coach in English and mostly everyone on the team knew English, but in Puerto Rico, I had a translator with me the whole time. And as a setter, that can be kind of difficult trying to communicate with your teammates about routes and stuff like that. But I think the biggest difference is just the sacrifice and isolation of being overseas when you're over there, you might have one other American, maybe a couple, or maybe not even one. Um, so you're by yourself a lot and you have to miss a lot. So like holidays, Christmases, birthdays, like you're not gonna be able to fly from Turkey or Italy, wherever you are back to the U S. Um, and here it's awesome because like my niece had her first birthday and I was able to drive six hours home and like go to her birthday party. So just, and my family can come watch me. So stuff like that, I feel like you just feel a lot more a part of like other aspects of your life versus overseas. Like I had a boyfriend and I was communicating and we were in a nine hour time difference change and like just being able to talk to each other, stuff like that. There's just a lot of challenges um, that go along with it. And volleyball is like the center of your world when you're overseas, just because you're isolated from everything else. So I think that's what I appreciate the most about being in the States is that you're still able to have like your life too. (laughs) Yeah, there's not a lot of uh, volleyball and life balance overseas, that is for sure. Mm -hmm. So now we've got this life happening along with volleyball. So what's that involve here in in Omaha, Nebraska or in general? Well, I think one of the biggest things is like it's allowed, you know, as female athletes, you know, a lot of athletes tend to like have children and to have to go overseas with like your entire family is it's hard. And I think that's allowed like moms back into sport. So uh-huh. like we have a teammate, Jess, who came out of retirement after she had a child and came back and, you know, Betty De La Cruz also has a son and Cree, Christina or Christina has a son as well. And, you know, it's just like, it allows like moms to come back in sport, especially like our local, like American mm-hmm. ones. And I think that's really been awesome. Yeah. And for me, mm-hmm. I was going to stop 
playing volleyball if I had to continue going overseas because I wanted to pursue my career. Yeah. I work as a scientist for a medical diagnostics company, and I'm able to keep that job remotely right now and play volleyball versus if I was overseas, that wouldn't have been an option at all. So getting to do that mm. and just, I think, having your family and friends close by, I think that can just create a whole other aspect of life. <laughs> Yeah, sure. Yeah. And you guys are from close. Uh, Sydney, you're from Minnesota. Yep. And uh, Kendall, Indiana. And I didn't even know you were from yeah. Indianapolis. So that's... Uh, wow. <laughs> I'm actually from Zionsville. It's a small town. It's a small that, town. But... I'm so sorry. Yeah. I did see that. Yes. No, it's okay. okay. <laughs> Get that. <laughs> um, so we're now entering into... We're almost into May. Okay. You guys started this in January. You're sitting in a pretty good spot within the league. Uh, four teams are going to show up in Omaha there on your home court, which is pretty nice. Mm -hmm. And there's going to be a championship playoff there. Talk to me a little bit about what that all means to you and, and what it is about this that you're looking forward to. I'll go, I guess. <laughs> I was just looking at Kendall, waiting yeah. for her to go. But I think <laughs> I was looking at you. Sorry. I think wait, one, you're number two. She's number three. Yeah, number order. Is that right? Yeah. I'm okay, three. we'll go in order. Yeah. Okay. I think yeah. one thing I really like about this league is just the depth and competitiveness of it. Like no one right now is out of contention for the playoffs. Like everyone has the ability yep. to still make it, and on any given night, anyone can beat anyone. So I think that's really cool. It's just like, you have to prepare. And if you're not playing your A game, you will get beat. So I think that that level of play um, is something I really like about this league and that it's exciting that four of these teams get to be in Omaha. And I hope we're one of them, but we got to take it one at a time just because of how awesome these teams are in the league. Um, but if we are there, I know our fans are going to show out and I'm so excited that it's in Omaha. <laughs> Yeah, right. Yes. That's nice. Yes. Yeah, I'm also super excited. It's like on our home turf. I think that's definitely an advantage for us. And I think we've, you know, earned that right because of we have I think we have the best fans by far. Um, they really showed up for us. And so we're happy that they, you know, honored them in that in that way and we got to host. But like Sid said, I think that it is absolutely not a given that we are in the finals yet. Um, you know. Mm. We've had dog fights with every single team. We've had, we've lost to the lowest team in the league and, you know, and like we've beaten one of the best, like who's first at other times. And so it's just this, anybody, like she said, can win any game. And if we don't bring our A game every single, you know, set leading up to this, these playoffs, then it can be anyone's game. And I think that we're confident going into it. I think we're trying to find a chemistry and a flow leading into it, but yeah, going in with confidence and just trying to earn each little game, <laughs> but I'm very excited. Yeah. Um, you know, championships are fun and I love the fans. So <laughs> there's no one for the crowd. <laughs> yes. So speaking of that, the fans. So you two, mm -hmm. Wisconsin, Penn State, you guys, we had some battles here with the Corn Huskers. And um, both of you have had some really high performances against them. And so coming in, I think Huskers have always appreciated a very competitive atmosphere and match. And the Big Ten mm. is full of that day in and day out. So when you guys were coming in, was it just like, yeah, they'll they'll take me in. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to fit right in. I'll be uh, in this beloved fan base. Did it happen right away? Did you have any hesitation? Uh, what was that like for you guys uh. getting started, introduced? <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to lie. Like, I have a big personality. So people tend to really like me or really hate me. <laughs> so, you know, it, it kind of just depends. Uh, that's not just like, you know, specific to Nebraska, but that's just normal in my life. I'm used to it. Um, I wasn't expecting like, everyone to like accept us right away, honestly. Um, you know, we have to prove ourselves and like who we are. And yes, they know of us from Big Ten, which is really amazing because they follow the Big Ten and they know, you know, they know who we are, which yeah. is great. Um, but they did welcome us pretty easily like after our first autograph signing people were like oh my gosh like i've watched you play finally we can cheer on your side of the net mm -hmm. like things like that um which have been really great and they've been so sweet and like it's so fun to go to autograph signings because they make you just feel so great and you're inspiring young little girls in nebraska and uh, hopefully all over the country 
So mm-hmm. it's been amazing. Mm-hmm. I, I love it in Nebraska. It feels like Midwest. It feels like home. So <laughs> it feels like Indiana to me. I can talk to a stranger at the grocery store and I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. We call that yeah. Midwest nice. Mm-hmm. Midwest exactly. nice. Yeah. Midwest nice. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, and for, oh, and for me, like I loved playing at Nebraska in college just because of how awesome their fans were mm-hmm. and just that atmosphere where they do appreciate just good volleyball and like they're very knowledgeable of, about the game. When I came here, I didn't necessarily know like how they would perceive me, but I honestly wasn't worried about it. I was like, I want to come to Omaha because I know that they're going to have fans. I know that they're going to show out for every yeah. game. But during mini camp, I think we had like a preseason event for season ticket holders. And this is before yes. our team has practiced once together. Like I had just learned everybody's names. <laughs> we don't know the system, nothing. But 500 season ticket, show, <laughs> ticket holders show up. We do autographs after. Everyone waits in line. Like this line takes like hour, hour and a half to get all 500 people through. And so many people came up to me and said, like, we're so excited that we get to cheer for you now. And I'm like, I'm so happy you get to cheer for me now because I know what you guys are like. (laughs) Um, But they have been just really welcoming. And even from our first match, when they didn't know what they were going to Ex- what they were going to see, what they were going to expect. And they showed up to the game, 11,000 strong. And it was a five set battle, like 15, mm-hmm. 13. And they stayed throughout the entire match, stayed for autographs. And I feel like they've just been with us throughout this entire journey. And it's been incredible that they adopted us so early on. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. And through the ups and downs too, I think, this fan base has been really amazing with showing support through even our losses. I think that we feel the support every single time. So that's nice. And that's not something you experience everywhere you go. When you have that kind of support, um, does that even sort of fire up your competitive juices to just want to go out there and, and uh, even do, I mean, you're already doing your very best. I, I don't see the two of you stepping on the court without that intention every time and prepared to do so Mm -hmm. did it fire that up more (laughs) or are you guys already at that level there is no (laughs) boost i mean i definitely think you think about it i think there i think kobe bryant said this but he says every time i go and play a game like someone in the crowd hasn't seen me play and i want to inspire them and be Mm -hmm. the best that i can be and so like, I think when we step out in the CHI center, it's like, okay, how can I inspire this crowd and get them going and have their energy be an advantage for us? And I think our biggest thing is like defense. I think they get so fired up when we get really good digs and transition to a kill. So I think that's something that we've been trying to do is improve our defense and improve just our transition game so that the crowd can really get into it. Mm-hmm. You gave me goosebumps. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Karch Karai calls them Karch bumps. Yeah. yeah. Very cool. Yeah, he does. That is true. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's he so does fun. say that. I mean, yeah. arms and legs, Sydney. Arms and legs. <laughs> Shout out to Kobe. Heavy that duty. <laughs> you know, one of the other things about the league, it seems like, and, and you guys can correct me on this. A lot of the people in these on these teams are either former opponents against your, you or you know of them. There's only a couple. I think it's just a couple international players this year allowed. Yeah, two per team. Two per team, yeah. And so what's that like? I mean, you're battling it. And then uh, are there ever any like contentious moments when you guys are going after this? Yeah. Or is this just think, friendly competition at, at its highest? Yeah, I think, um, you know, when you're in college, it turns into more of rivalries. Um, you know, you tend to like, you know, want to like really beat the other person across the net. But <laughs> in what of my I've experienced through pro is that, you know, your team can change completely the next year. You can play with everybody that's on the other side of the net. And I think that that mm-hmm. allows for a lot more, you know, sportsmanship. <laughs> uh, I think across the net. And I think, uh, you know, when you're playing someone who you love, who you're friends with, I think, you know, it makes me at least, and a lot of people that I know play a lot harder, you know, you want to beat your friends, butt as much as you want to beat your enemies and you talk <laughs> about it and have wine after the game and, you know, talk about it and see what's happening. But I think that we know each other well through like past experiences, but people grow. And I think that, you know, they learn, even though we're professionals, you know, you can still sharpen Mm -hmm. your skills and hone your skills and learn things from other players that you play with. So it's not necessarily the same person you've played in college. And, you know, the things that you've seen from them in the past, they can be completely different, have different tendencies. And 
just remembering that people grow and having to watch film is really important before every match. No, don't just assume that you know them because you played them before. Yeah. You know, and I think it's awesome because I go through like the warm up handshake line and I'm like, good luck, Morgan. Good luck, Allie. Good luck, Leah. Like, I know, I know yes. so many people <laughs> and like, I think it does make for a competitive atmosphere, but also like when you take a step back, you're like, yes, all these people are getting this awesome opportunity to play volleyball in the US. And we're all like kind of bonded by mm -hmm. being part of this first year of this league, the first professional volleyball yep. league in the US. So I think that just that brings us together and you want to see this league succeed. And so therefore you want, you want to see all of them succeed as well. Yeah. I think seeing each other and knowing each other just makes it more fun. As somebody that's been watching you all play, um, I, t I tell you, it is, I feel that, I see it, you know, just that uh, amazing joy, really, that's happening out on the floor, both teams, and just going at it. I mean, they're, they're going at it, and isn't that the best part about playing this game uh, that you get to mm -hmm. do is, I'm going to send my best your way, and what do you got to come back, <laughs> kind of thing. Kendall, you're a libero, and I was. Uh, I am. You are a libero, and and <laughs> one of the things you talked about in an interview or something I read about you, you go, I have a short term memory. Yeah, and I love winning. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of your memories, <laughs> and this was, I think I got this from the uh, might have been the Hall All America banquet of your senior year, uh, one of your memories oh, was beating Wisconsin at the end of the season. Oh, man. So now, wow. Yeah, how about that? I, I had to, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I will. Yeah, okay. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I do have a short-term memory. I think I have a short-term, I, I love to live like in those wins, but you know, there's always a next game. So honestly, I barely remember that one. I'm not going to lie Short-term memory. Short-term memory. Yeah, short-term memory. You know, I'm trying to focus on I remember players. that game. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. Because we could have we won the Big Ten, and then we lost you guys in five. We were up 2-0, and you guys reverse swept us. But we still won the Big Ten. Oh, dear. Yeah. The next game. You did? Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. It's okay. <laughs> See, I didn't know those details. Didn't remember that. But oh, hey, I remember that's, the losses that's more than the stuff. wins. That's for sure. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> the losses are definitely more memorable. That is, that's horrible to say, but that is the truth. Yeah, that's fun. So, Sydney, you're a setter, setter role. Mm -hmm. One of the things that you said somewhere that I read is, "I love the battles." Mm -hmm. I think you're referring to the Wisconsin team. We, we want to be on the attack. Mm -hmm. You know, you're delivering that ball. You want to be on the attack, being the aggressor. And having fun. Mm -hmm. And uh, this part, Kendall, you can probably appreciate is that she loves defense. She loves blocking and she's a good digger. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah. got anything to say about her as a <laughs> defensive I mean, player? Oh, that's something I've been really working on since I've gotten here. <laughs> okay. I've gotten a lot yeah. of extra reps on those things and obviously still a work in progress <laughs> as we all are. But I mean, I think being on the attack is something that is just a mindset like you have to go into every game with. You got to play without fear. You got to just trust in your game and trust the people around you that you know what you're doing. Because once you get in those big moments, there's nothing you can like think about that's going to change it. You're like, you're already in it and everything that you train is going to show up in that moment. Um, so I think that's mm. the biggest thing. And then Bird has brought that up even recently. Our head coach, she said, there's no yeah. fear on the mountaintop because one of her friends was yeah. climbing a huge mountain and was like on the top of it and didn't want to take a picture because he was scared. And the tour guide or whoever was there was like, Hey, there's no fear on, on the mountaintop. So now that's kind of our phrase that we're mm -hmm. going into everything with is just, we're going to be courageous and trust what yeah. we know and play without fear. I love that actually. God, you might've given me goosebumps a second time. <laughs> Sydney, what's going on? Here? I'm just okay. quoting other people. So, Credit to other people. On that. <laughs> yeah. Fun fact. Bird played for Georgia Tech when I was coaching at Maryland. Played on the right Ooh. side. And I'm telling you, she was a competitor. She was a, um, a tough hitter, player all the way around. And on a very, very great team. Coached by Shelton Collier uh, back in that day. But, I would actually uh, love to yeah, see I have her a lot play. Of for me too. Me too. I I'm so curious. We just need I've some seen her yeah. assistant coach play like one on one short court. And not gonna lie, she loses yeah. every time. So I'm like, I need to see this. 
<laughs> you know, wow, air her dirty laundry. It's That's true. Crazy. Thomas wins every time. And I'm like, I want to see what Burns <laughs> actually like in a game. Throw her oh, a slide set. That was yeah. that was her thing. As long as her <laughs> knees can, you know, still hold that. But uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Kaylee Evelyn Absolutely. was her setter, mm-hmm. and she would set that ball low and tight. And, and I mean, they were just like boom, boom, boom. Yeah, was, I saw that she has her uh, jersey retired. We practiced at Georgia Tech the other day, and oh, she's the only jersey that's did. retired up there. So. Ah, oh, fantastic! Yeah. That's mm-hmm. very cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Very cool. Yeah, she's uh, she was something that's for sure, and still is. Mm-hmm. So you two are such great role models. Uh, for those listening, what would you t- tell them your biggest adjustment was coming from college and going into the pros as a player in preparation, as just how the team work happened? It seems to me it's quite a bit different, but there's probably things that were the same and some things that mm-hmm. were, were different. Can you talk about those? For us? I think Sid touched on it a little bit. I think um, earlier, I think my biggest adjustment was definitely I had nothing else in my life when I went overseas. I think that like I went right into volleyball and it was solely volleyball. And, you know, I've been like volleyball obsessed since I was like a really like little girl. So probably since I was like 13, I was going to practice like every day. But (laughs) Um, I think the biggest adjustment was mentally having to be like, all right, like my self-worth and all of my value does not depend on whether or not I just win and lose. Mm. And I think that's something I had to grow with, like as a player and as a person and just be like, okay, like there are other parts of my life that are like, I'm valued in other parts of my life. And I think growing there mm. has been very important, but, um, like when it comes to the game and analyzing that, I think that the biggest adjustment from college to pro would just be like a lot more film. Um, I think that, you know, when I was overseas, we'd watch film, uh, I think five days a week leading up to a match. And if we had two teams, we would alternate that weekend. So we would alternate on what that was. And so the preparation, you know, it it was volleyball all the time. And it's like the preparation leading up to that, um, was, it was a lot, it was a lot at first. And I think we've had conversations with that with our team here and tried to balance it out. Um, so yeah, definitely the biggest adjustment, but not, not something I hate to be honest. Like I like watching film, so. Yeah. It's been good. I mean, going off of the, what you said, it's just like the value, like sometimes when you're, you're an athlete, you like put your everything into volleyball. Right. And like you, those yeah. wins and losses, like when you lose, like it feels like the world is ending sometimes. And I feel like sometimes you have to take <laughs> that step back oh, yeah. and say, that's not all I am as a human being. Like, yes, I want to be great mm-hmm. at volleyball, but there are other things like, did you work hard? Did you have a good attitude? All those intangible things I think are really important, um, especially for those younger volleyball players that are listening to this. I think that that's, that's a huge thing. And you can't let losses affect your confidence or your value as a person. Um, I think one of the other adjustments from college to pro is that as a pro, like you're treated as a pro and that means you have to own your own yeah. improvement. Like you have to find ways to get better on your own. Okay. Um, versus like in college, I feel like it was like an assistant coach or a head coach would come up to me and say, Hey, we're going to watch film on this. And then we're going to wrap this out. And then we're going to mm-hmm. do this in the game. And we're going to strategize this way versus here. It's like, you got to say, Hey coach, I want to work on this. And Hey, I'm, I want to watch film on this or, and you have to do it on your own and find those 1%. Like, how can I get 1% better every single day? Like you have to own that yourself because no one else is going to do it for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So when, when you guys come out of a, a, a competition, win, lose, you guys do your own self-evaluation. Like here's something I figured out that I need to get a little bit better at. Um, as a team, if there were certain things that maybe you guys didn't quite uh, have ironed completely out, how do you address that? What What's that like in the, in the week after a competition where you um, get to evaluate those and put, put some time and effort into that? Yeah, we're, we're living that right now. <laughs> we came off a <laughs> yeah. loss against Atlanta in four and in the locker mm. room, we came up and said, what do you guys think? Like, why did we lose? And I think it came down to defense. Like I think Atlanta had double digit 
more digs than us. And like, if you have that many more digs, you have that many more opportunities to score and put the ball away and you're frustrating the Mm -hmm. other team. So I said, let's focus on our team defense. So throughout this week, we've really like broken that down and said like, this is our system. This is what we're going to do. And like, we got to be disciplined and we just got to make an effort. And those are two things that we've been really working on. And I think like throughout our drills, like the players are really good at holding each other accountable and saying like, Hey, like we need to dig that ball or Hey, that's your ball. Like, I think we're getting better at that as a team. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think we, honestly, I think we've had good communication when it comes to like, listen, you need to go there into that seam or when we're communicating, like Sam digging behind a block and the block is in a horrible position. I'm like, listen, you you need to get it (laughs) or you need to block inside of the that is undiggable. She's about to the 10 foot line, like get in there. Um, and I do think like what Sid was saying, I think that one thing that comes from defense is that it takes confidence away from other people because they have to, you know, swing two, three times in order to score. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what Atlanta kind of did to us. And so that's what, that's what we were really talking about, which was, you know, we can't lose confidence because other people are playing well, you know, that's not on them just because they, they can play well, but we can also fight back and play well as like, and come at them. So um, those are definitely two focuses of the week. Mm-hmm. I think after a match, win or lose, um, we usually have discussions amongst the team and then we'll kind of bring those to bird and then she'll bring like what she has um, from the coaches and kind of like a collaborative kind of thing leading into the week of what we want to discuss or like what we want to work on and what we need to do leading into the next match. Yeah. I, I would say that's probably a very valuable part of what being a pro is, is that you're yeah. in it, you're playing it. You've got your eyes on the ball and mm-hmm. and uh, see areas that can be improved and changed. So that's really yeah. cool. Yeah. Well, and as pros, um, I mean, I've been playing volleyball now for 18 years. Um, we've all been playing volleyball for a very long time. Some of us are coaches who came back to play. Some of us have coached uh, coach in our off time. Mm-hmm. And so we see the game very similarly to coaches a lot. So I think another yeah. big change from like college to pro is it's, Cause we are full grown women, yeah. you know, and our coach is also a full grown woman. <laughs> like we can have, you know, conversations and we can discuss like what we see, what they see. And it's just, it's very collaborative versus like, boom, boom, boom. Like this is how it's going to be. And like, you know, we can talk about how we see the game, what we're seeing, like what tendencies. And I think that's been very like, I don't know, beneficial for well, our going team. That too, when you're on the court and you're playing with people like Betty or Tori or Nazi, like all Mm -hmm. these people who have so much experience. It's like you're playing with another coach on the court. And I think that everyone on the team is really good at giving each other feedback as well, whether it's in your same position or not. Like, I think we work really well together to like kind of coach each other through things. Yep. That was one of my questions. So what's the best advice (laughs) you have (laughs) gotten from uh, one of the, the, the veterans that, has a lot of years. I think (laughs) like with Betty, I don't think it's anything that she necessarily has like said to me, but I think it's just how like she goes about her own game. Like, I feel like she's just so steady Mm -hmm. and confident. And like, if she needs something from her teammate, she's not going to like sugarcoat it. She's not going to be like, Hey, can you maybe set me a little bit higher? (laughs) She'd be like, Hey, that set needs to be higher. Like she'll hold you accountable. She's confident in herself, no matter what's going on in the game, no matter if she missed her last three serves, she's going to go back there and you trust her that she's going to go and get an ACE and win this game. Like, I feel like she's just earned that trust from other people that she's just that rock and that confident person, no matter what is happening. And I think that's something I want to have in my own game. Yeah. I I would say honestly, from most of the vets, I think people don't give Tori enough credit. Um, overall, I think Tori is one of our most stable players. I think she's a phenomenal blocker. I think she's probably the best read blocker in this league, if not more than just this league. Um, and I just think she does her job so well that like, she's never, you know, like this, I think she's so consistent. And I think that, you know, people tend to overlook how, how like great, like the things that she does well all the time because she's doing them all of the time. <laughs> and I think like just seeing her consistency and her like mellowness kind of like throughout, um, I think there's different, uh, needs on a team. I think you need people who are consistent and comp- like mm-hmm. and confident and just, you know, do what they need to do. People like Betty who are coming out banging people <laughs> who bring a lot of energy. <laughs> <Me>. <laughs> 
uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> people who are super analytical, like Sid. Mm-hmm. And there's just like a balance of all of that. And I think that I like seeing Tori a lot. I like learning from Tori because I think that I admire her ability to just be so consistent, regardless of what she's going through in her life, regardless of, you know, how she's feeling at practice that week. I, I truly think that just like time and reading and she's just very confident in what she does. So I think confidence is truly the key with all, all of them. And I think they bring it off the table. So I'm going to sing her some praises as well, because when I watched this last time, two things, one blocking her sealing the net or closing off the angle or what, I mean, it's just like, sort of like not there. And then all of a sudden, no, that's not going there. It's just not (laughs) going to have any space. And then, Your connection with her, Sydney, it seems that it's pretty special. Uh, you you t- tend to find each other and yeah, uh, really connect well. Yeah, and I think it it helps when, like what Kendall said, when she's so consistent. I know exactly where she's going to be. Her mm-hmm. timing is always on point. So, like, I feel like as a setter, it yep. makes it a lot easier to trust that connection when maybe the pass isn't perfect. You can still push it because you know she's going to be there at what time and all this stuff. So I think that that's one thing that I really appreciate about Tori is that I know where she's going to be and she wants the ball and that helps with the connection. Yeah. She's reliable. She mm-hmm. is. Exactly. That's, that's a good word. It's <laughs> a great word. Let's talk about uh, leadership. Later, I have a couple of things uh, that I spoke to both Russ and Kelly. Mm-hmm. And I got some really good stuff. I was having way too much fun, but uh, I was trying to write everything down, but uh, I'll get to some of that here in a little bit. Um, So leadership, that's something that I see the two of you doing a really good job of uh, in many different ways. Uh, What's that mean to you? Um, And did you always strive to be a really uh, a leader or was that just something that happened? Um, I think for me, I've, I'm a very like loud, I have a big personality. I think that I like to step into the leadership roles. I, I'm not scared of them. I really appreciate them. I I'm not scared of like the pressure that comes with that. And I think that I always have an opinion, uh, which means (laughs) I'm like, you know, always going to say what I'm thinking. And, uh, it's not always nice, but, um, you know, sometimes, you know, sometimes it's necessary. And I think that, you know, when it comes to the court, I, run the backcourt. Like that's my job. I run the backcourt. I run the passing, you know, we're discussing what's going on on defense and things like that. And Sid, you know, she's running the front court. She's running that, that offense. And I think as a setter, like, I mean, you can speak on this, but I think as a setter, you know, you, you're forced into that, into mm-hmm. that leadership role, you know, you're running the offense and you know, you've got to do that. And I think she does that flawlessly. Yeah. So. I was going to say exactly that. I feel like position wise, like if you're a setter, you're someone who is running the offense. You're someone who's touching the ball every play. And so like, you're naturally kind of thrown into that role, but do I think leadership is always natural? No. Like, I feel like it's a skill that I've had to develop a lot. And in college Mm -hmm. with Kelly, like that was something that we spent so much time on, on how to be a good leader and how to bring the best out of people. And one of my favorite things that we did was we did something called a DISC assessment where it's like a personality assessment and everyone on the team took it. And the four personalities are D, which is like the dominant personality. Like I would say Kendall is like one of those people who on the court is like really fiery, result oriented. (laughs) And like an I is someone who's interpersonal, who just like needs that connection with other people, like really social. Like I'd say like not team, maybe an, maybe an I. Um, an S is someone who's really steady, who doesn't get too high and too low. And it's just like, they, they also want that connection, but they don't need that like raw, raw in their ear. They're just going to be consistent and do their job. That's like a Tory. And then you have a C mm-hmm. mm. and that's someone who's compliant, who likes rules, who's very analytical. That's like me. I'm a C. And so you're a C. Yeah, I'm a C. <laughs> but based yeah. on those personalities, sure. like you talk to people differently when you know, what their style is and what brings the best out of them. Like, for example, for Kendall, if she just gets ace, for example, I'm not going to come up to her and say, Hey, like you- does not happen often. <laughs> let's just drop that in. There. Okay. That's rough. No, example. No, I'm not going to come up to you and be like, it's okay. You got the next one. And like, pat your back. I'm be like, Hey, you get her that next ball. Like no. you communicate very differently yeah. based on what that person mm-hmm. needs. And so I think as a leader, you got to be really mindful about the message you're sending to different people. And, 
I feel mm. like I've gotten a lot mm. better at like when I have an idea in my head at like saying it in a way that's going to be perceived well by others. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I completely agree with that, Sid. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I think that especially at the level that we play at, you know, everyone knows how to do their job. I think one of the biggest skills you can have is learning how to make people better by motivating them. Uh-huh. So like finding what makes them tick. Um, some people need their ego fanned and flamed <laughs> and like that makes them play good. Like that's the thing. And you, you, if you can recognize that and make somebody better by doing that, like, okay, you compliment them, you tell them what they're doing. Great. Don't point out what they're doing bad. If they're great in one part of their game right now, make them great in one part of their game, like encourage them. And I think like, like you were saying, I, if you can figure it out and we had this discussion actually with, um, our sports psych, um, about how to motivate each other. And so we like broke down what we like and what the kind of communication style we like, we probably should have done it in the words you were saying, but <laughs> we did it, we did it like that. And I think that it was really helpful about, um, what we need when we need motivation or what's happening when things are going rough for us. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. yeah. So, you know, I always think that, uh, Building confidence in young girls and women is uh, really important. Um, it is. Where, when and where did that uh, transpire for you guys? Were you born with that kind of confidence? Uh, is that something that you developed over time, working on your skills and working mm-hmm. on your, your person to be the very best all the time? Um. um. For me, I think I was born a very confident person. (laughs) Uh, To be honest, I think I really was. Like, I think I was born very confident. I think through like social interactions and things like that, I think like my confidence was like knocked down a peg. Like, you know, like we're told not to be that confident kind of like as women, like, you know, Uh, but in sports, I always felt like I was able Mm -hmm. to be very confident in what I did. And I think Mm -hmm. that came from lots and lots and lots of practice. I think um, I'm pro practice. I am pro getting to the gym as much as I possibly can to where I'm comfortable. Um, and if I want more, like go get more. And I felt like the amount of practice and the amount of touches that I got when I was younger allowed me to be like, listen, every ball that I touch is going to be gold. Like I got this, like everything that I'm doing. And so I think that that allowed me to build confidence. I think that coaches had to knock me down a peg <laughs> okay. a couple of times. All right. Sure. Yeah. Hey, I mean, that's good. It, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> and I think it's a great thing to have confidence. I don't think cockiness is great. I don't, I would say I would never was cocky. I know I would have bad moments. I think I'm my hardest uh, critic mm-hmm. by far. Um, no one's saying meaner things to me than I'm saying to myself. <laughs> and that's a fact. Mm-hmm. That's a fact. Mm-hmm. And I think that, you know, you can be your biggest supporter and you can be confident as long as, you know, you can also humble yourself. Like, you know, you're not the best thing all the time, but, um, yeah, I think confidence, it can be learned. It can be earned Mm -hmm. through practice. Mm -hmm. Um, whatever makes you feel comfortable, but I think mine was practice. And, you know, I did think I was hot stuff walking around my feather boa and high heels in my diaper (laughs) when I was a child. So that also, (laughs) yeah, I mean, confidence is also, I think it's a skill. And I think especially like, in the age we live in now where like comparison is everywhere, like whether that's social media or whatever it may be, I feel like you're never like at a point where it's like, okay, I'm confident and I'm always going to be confident. And there's never a moment where that confidence drops. Like, I feel like it's a journey like throughout your life. It's like, you have moments where you're like, you're like, yes, I'm super confident in every aspect of my life. And there's moments where like, you might not feel like that. And so I think like what Kendall is saying is like, yes, I think, being your own biggest critic is a great thing. But I also think, especially for the young players out here is like the way you talk to yourself in volleyball and in life is so important. And like, yes, you can recognize Mm -hmm, the things that you need to get better at, but the way you're talking to yourself can change your confidence and your performance. Like there's been so many studies about that. And I think that if you Mm -hmm. do see something like on the court where like, say I make a bad set, instead of saying like, Oh my gosh, like I stink today. I'm so bad. Like, how am I making a bad set after being in this position for however many years and like letting yourself go on this like negative thought train, you got to flip it and be like, Mm -hmm. I need to square up more on that next set. Like keep working through this. Like you're working on something new, give yourself grace. And I think that that's something that we all need, even at professionals, like you have moments where Mm -hmm. you're struggling and like, you need Mm -hmm. to talk to yourself in a way that's going to help you and not make you worse. 
Um, and I think that in every yeah. aspect of your life too, like whether you wake up and you have a couple pimples on your face and you're like, Oh my gosh, I look terrible today. <laughs> like that's like not how you should talk to yourself because then you're portraying that energy and like that lack of confidence. Mm-hmm. Like you need mm-hmm. to find a way to talk mm-hmm. to yourself positively throughout every aspect. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I also do think that something like we were talking about the confidence that comes from like our veterans on our team. And I think that this is like a, kind of a weird thing, but like fake confidence. Mm-hmm. Like if you portray confidence, it allows your teammates to have more trust in you. And that's a fact. Like the more confident you are, the more they're like, Oh, she's got this, mm-hmm. you know, she's got this, she's got this. It's all good. And I think that, um, it's a practice. Like even if you don't feel confident, you can, portray this confidence and then it just starts to come naturally the more you like give it off and the more you're like i got this like i'm good and then five second goldfish memory like you were saying say <laughs> like you might double ball i might hit you in the face say it slides right through your hands but the next ball you know if you have confidence you're like eh, whatever that's a fluke i'm great that's a fluke next ball and i just think with that kind of mentality even if you're just thinking that way like you're saying like that self-talk it can be so helpful when you're trying to learn that skill and build that for yourself and i feel like i've had a lot of questions be in the moment right yeah yeah be where your feet are i love that phrase but um be- <laughs> i feel like i've yeah. gotten a lot of questions from like younger athletes about like how do you have confidence in like the high pressure situation like when the game is on the line like how are you yeah. confident okay. And I think every time I answer that question, I'm like, you have to train like you're in those moments. Like you have to set yourself up to be Mm -hmm. in those high pressure Mm -hmm. situations, scenarios and see yourself succeed at practice so that you have that memory and that confidence so that when you're in that moment, you're prepped for it. You've done it a million times. It's no big deal. And I think that's something that we did great Mm -hmm. at Wisconsin. Like randomly Kelly be like, Hey, here's a ball, go serve. You're down 14, 13 in the national championship fifth set, like go serve. And you're like, you have to, like, you can't just say that and just go do it. Like you have to like envision it and feel it. And like, this is where I am when I'm serving that ball. So that when you get in that moment, you've done it before you've seen yourself succeed, you're ready to go. So I think that's what I've told a lot of people is just like, if you're in the gym, getting reps by yourself, like, don't just go through the motion, like train with a purpose, train with a moment Mm -hmm. in mind so that you're ready for it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Train with expectations. Mm -hmm like hold yourself to a high standard all the time. And then, you know, it's not going to feel like anything. Mm-hmm. It's going to feel like another play mm-hmm. when you get into those scenarios. Keeps the, keeps the anxiety down a little mm-hmm. bit too, probably. You know, oh, yeah. It keeps it down here. So uh, <laughs> your guys' roles in rallies, okay? Kendall, your role is to keep the rallies going. Yes. Sydney, your role <laughs> is to that? figure out how to end the rallies. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully so, I'm keeping it going with my defense and then ending it offensively and not the other yeah. way around. But, you got multiple. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> So, so, uh, you know, I, I think in the libero role, um, you got your passing, you got your defense, you got your coverage, you got your support, your energy. Mm-hmm. Um, what of those things? And is there more? And of those things, what is the, the, the most fun for you in your role? Um, well, there's also add a system setting. I mean, that's really important because yes. if it is yes. like, yes. and like that, like we are, you know, communicating and usually pretty efficient, um, when we're doing that. But this is interesting because I think this has actually changed for me. Um, I used to just absolutely, absolutely love defense and I still love defense, but I really, really enjoy passing. Like at this point, like in my career, I think that I'm like a great passer and I'm so, so extremely confident in my passing. And I think that that confidence allows me to be like, all right, like, let's go like serve me, baby mm-hmm. kind of thing. And mm-hmm. I, I really enjoy that because I feel like I'm kind of in my element and I can read. And then I'm like, okay, if we get a perfect pass, if we can put this thing away, like instantly, like first ball kill, let's do this. Mm-hmm. And then, um, I do appreciate defense though. Like I love defense because I appreciate the, appreciate the grittiness of it. Um, you know, uh, I've never been in a fist fight, but I feel like I'd be like, that's, that's what I feel like when I'm, you know, playing defense, I feel like we're in a fight mm-hmm. against each other and mm-hmm. it's like you versus me. It's, you know, the ball versus the floor. And I think that, um, treating it as such and treating it like as it's personal, like making defense personal, it's, I just, that's kind of like my take on it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I don't know. I love that. I love my whole job. So just <laughs> okay. let me get it all up. I also really love setting cause you know, assist. <laughs> yeah, and right. Sid's got to cover. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Sid, how about you? I mean, wow. There's a lot of things going on for you. Um, 
Mm-hmm. She'd get that perfect pass from Kendall over here. Mm-hmm. And she's like, all right, set this really great ball and let's get a kill. And you got to make the decision. Who gets the ball? Where's the block at? What do I see? Are my hitters all feeling in the good space? Is this part of the game plan? Like mm-hmm. you're processing a lot of those things. Of all of that in your role, what do you love the most? Or what are the top things that you love the most in your job? I'd say, let's see, two things. One is getting stuff blocks because I feel like blocking has been a skill that (laughs) I really, really, really had to work on. And so like when I, I feel like when that's like, when you're in that moment and it happens, you're like, yes, like you're so excited because you know how much work you put into it. But in terms of setting, I think my favorite thing is putting my hitters in a good scenario to score. So like, for example, you run a play where the middle's fronting the gap and then you set the red behind and it's a one-on-one situation and they get a kill. You're just like, yes, like I put them in that perfect position for them to go and score. Mm-hmm. Or like you hear the middle blocker over on the other side of the net, like curse a little bit. They're like, oh shoot, because I went the wrong way. I think that's another <laughs> one where you, yeah. that's another rewarding moment when you, you put them in a bad situation. But I think the most rewarding is definitely seeing like your hitters succeed with something that they've been working on and you put them in a situation where they can use it. And I think that, I think that's the coolest part. Yeah. Yeah. I have watched you both compete at a very high level uh, for, mm-hmm. for a number of years, day in and day out. When did you understand that to be your very best, you had to immerse yourself in the process of getting better every day. And you talked a little bit about get 1% better every day. However you frame that in your mind, at what age? I mean, you guys were, you were playing at, I think you were playing at s- six or uh, really young. I, was, I started at eight years yeah, old. You're eight. And, Club. Yeah. I think mine was like seven. I don't really know. <laughs> <laughs> and I think you were a hitter. I think early on you were a hitter, Sydney. Yeah, I actually like, because I was so young, they started me as a setter because I was the littlest person. But then in high school, I got to hit outside. So that that was fun. That was the only time I got to hit. But, you know, that was a highlight. <laughs> yeah. I got to hit middle school. Hey, I might be 5'5", five five, but I was yeah. uh, Okay, a couple things. I know we're getting close to the end here. Um, and I got to uh, pull up my notes because this is, this is the stuff that came from... Um, I'm going to start with uh, Kendall here. And, mm-hmm. you know, this was Russ... I called Russ and Russ and, and I went to grad school together and he's a dear friend of mine I love for, that. for a very, very long time. Um, and um, he's, he said these things, you wake up in the morning, your eyes go open and you're in that speed and it doesn't change until you go to, to, to sleep at night and you close your eyes. Yeah, You're a character. He loves coaching kids with character. And mm-hmm. he said, you were also the poster child for asking for forgiveness after something took place. <laughs> that is true. And I, I never asked for permission. That's true. Forgiveness is good. Yeah. I think one thing, um, like from Russ, yeah. uh, I never call him that, which is so weird. I, I just call him coach. 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 Uh, yeah, I just call him coach. Uh, but I think one thing that he really allowed for me to thrive in that environment is because you, like he said, like I was a character, he allowed me to be 100 and totally pers- like me. Yeah. Like I, like my energy, I, I am one speed. I mean, I'm pretty <laughs> much this energetic all the time. So, uh, in most aspects of my life and I, I love it. I like that about myself yeah. and he loved that about me. He, you know, he let me really take off and thrive in that environment. And he really like nourished that, like, part of who I was as a person and allowed me to grow, uh, while I was at Penn state. So like, that was awesome. And you know, he never made me feel bad about being the loudest in the room. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, he said, uh, you're tough Mm. and probably somebody that's maybe not so tough might have a hard time playing with you because you're going to demand that they step up to that plate and they're going to get serious and get after it. Yeah. He thought that you were a really, great leader and and just the energy you brought to the floor was just something special all the time and you yep. represented Penn State Penn State is very proud of their Kindle White 
Yeah. You know, I'm grateful. I mean, I loved Penn State. I would never have made a different choice. I loved all my time there and I loved working like with Coach Rose and under him. I learned a lot. And I think that, um, you know, I appreciate his compliments about saying that I'm tough. I think that um, there were some times at Penn State where he truly did believe that I was the tough one on the team. And I got a lot of the uh, lashback, even when I don't think it was always deserved. Mm. Um, And he knows that. We've talked about that after. But, you know, I can always take it. And I mean, I will always try to be better. And I, I, something that I've had to change a little bit um, going into pro is, communication styles like we were talking about earlier you know growing up uh, in my club that i was like raised in i put up muncieana yeah, indiana yeah. and you know we're taught to give it like it is and honestly the rougher the better <laughs> uh so we used to just you know tell each other like absolutely not like in <laughs> aggressive voices <laughs> um and so coming into college i had one girl like uh, one teammate of mine like come down after practice like don't speak to me like that and i was like <laughs> okay, oh my okay, god okay yeah And I was like, all right, clearly this is not beneficial for everyone. Let me take a step back. (laughs) And so I had to be like, okay, Mm -hmm. like this is obviously not working for everyone. And, you know, you can still hold people to a standard without, you know, being mean. And I think that I've grown in that way, but appreciate his words. Love him to death. Yeah. So he's a good dude. And so Sydney, Kelly, I I had my call with him. I immediately started like I'm doing this podcast and I'm going to have Sydney and and, uh, Kendall on and I'm I'm wanting to ask you a couple questions. He goes, time out, time out, Janice. He goes, hello, how are you? (laughs) I forgot, you know, I I didn't even get into the niceties and it was just such a really fun conversation with him. Mm -hmm. And uh, he had more than I could even uh, put on. He goes, I know you may not have enough time to do all this. So I'm going to pick a few things uh, Mm -hmm. that he said. And this is probably true of both of you, but one of the things he said, uh, Sydney, is you're a student of the game. You would get in the gym. You would do whatever it needs to be. You were in the gym the most, working on something. You were the compass uh, for Wisconsin volleyball. And that if you weren't sure as a player for that team, you just look to the compass over here with Sydney. And that was the direction you should go. And, and, and she, um, she was the leader in every way possible for his team. And that goes above and be, you know, there's also the fact that you're a very exceptional volleyball player uh, as well and setter. So things you, you, you want to make any comment about any of those? Um, I don't know. I mean, I like Kendall, like I wouldn't change any of my decision. Like I think going to Wisconsin was the best decision I could have ever made in my entire life. And I think that, Kelly is a huge reason why, like, I feel like I came out of college as a more confident and just like better human overall. And like, I feel like Mm -hmm. I still like hear his voice in my head, like throughout the day or throughout practice. I'm like, well, what would Kelly be saying right now? And it's just like in my mind. Um, but I, I wouldn't change a thing. Like I had such an incredible experience and like to end it on the first national championship in Wisconsin volleyball history was like storybook ending. And <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, and all those girls that I played with, like, we're still like, so bonded for life. Like I have four badgers coming to our game on Saturday. Like we, like we still like talk all the time and I talk to Kelly all the time. And so just like, <laughs> those memories and experiences and like lessons I've learned from him and everyone in the program are just like things I'll treasure forever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So things that, that, that uh, between the two of them uh, stated that these things you guys have in common. Okay. Ooh. Uh, they're both all in all the way, all the time to get their teams to play to the highest level. No question. Mm-hmm. Their competitiveness to be great is exceptional. Their respect for the game, to study the game, to learn the game, the respect for the game is really high. And you are a better team with either one of them on the floor with you. And that's that's a pretty high comp- compliment there. And uh, <laughs> Kelly did say one last thing. Oh, boy. He... <laughs> No, this one's really good because in the last 20 years in the Big Ten, if we had a Mount Rushmore 
uh, their faces would be on that rock wall. Oh. So you are oh. now on the Mount Rush, Rushmore <laughs> wall of Big Ten volleyball. <laughs> So just picture yourself there. We might have to get a drawing or something about that. So what do you have to say about that? That's pretty high. That's a pretty high compliment, you guys. Oh, that's crazy that's... considering, like, how many faces are on Mount Rushmore? Four or five? <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Hey, good. I can already name, like, ten of my teammates that I would think would be on there before me. So I just think, yeah, yeah. that's a good compliment. Though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was sweet. Yeah. Flattered, flattered for mm-hmm. sure. Um, Don't know by degree, even confidence at all. But <laughs> I love. It. So one other thing, um, he was talking about his daughters, mm-hmm. and one daughter in particular. Um, and this again, Kendall, this this had to do with you. She and her neighbor were all they watched every volleyball match that they could watch, and they're mm-hmm. at the the AVCA championship, and they're at the All America banquet. That you guys are at and um she's like dad can i go up can i can i go get some autographs from all these women so they, they go up they get an autograph and uh, apparently kendall she took a picture with you autograph and a picture and she came oh. running back, and and first off you have to know you were public enemy number one <laughs> for her shocker <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh she goes she took a picture with me and guess what? She's nice. <laughs> Dog, I know it is a shocker. Okay. You're tough demeanor. Yeah. You know, that's really, I, I thought that was just a really cool thing that they can see competitiveness in you ladies. And then they can get to meet you and see your soul and see your person, uh, who you, yeah. who you are all the time. Yeah. So. Yeah. If you had to say in a couple of sentences about how you left something better in your life. And again, um, you know, the, I, I'm working with the Side Out Foundation and with Dig Pink. Both of you two have been uh, very important folks to the Side Out Foundation for different reasons. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sydney, you worked with Mary Elena and with your master's degree and your background in geno and, and uh, genetics. Um, to do a, a study there. And uh, Kendall, the four years you were at Penn State, and Penn State is the only Division I school that has been a supporter of the Side Out Foundation for all 16 years. They have done mm-hmm. something every year to, and people do do breast cancer things, but they also did a donation that helps us uh, serve the metastatic breast cancer community. And during your time, you guys raised so much money, nearly raised $30,000 during that time that you were there um, uh, uh, towards us. And I appreciate everything and anything you guys have done with that. And uh, moving forward, if you ever have an opportunity, and you sh- share that knowledge. Uh, absolutely loved having you both on today. I have a lot of respect for you. And I just think you're great people and super volleyball players. And I did look to see if I could get a ticket to get to that game this Saturday. <laughs> <I'm> just- <laughs> because this Nebraska alumni, volleyball alumni are coming. Did you know that? No. You might not have no. known that. Yeah, it just came. Huh. I got an email this week. And they're like, yeah come there you get tickets to get in there's little hors d'oeuvres and so my alumni from nebraska they're all trying to get there and it's not off my list yet but i would love to come see you guys play in person <laughs> love it yeah. yeah we'll see you a ticket we got you <laughs> <laughs> all right thank you for listening please share your feedback with us at side-out.org